if you're into business and you're just doing it from your suitcase and nobody knows about it, then you might as well just buy your own drinks, eh? Because... <laughs> Well, let me ask you a question. Are you as clueless as I am when it comes to brand management, social media management, or graphic design? If you are just like me, then today we are about to get schooled by Ndina Gapuka, the owner and the CEO of Val Designs. I'm your host, Lidge, and this is Africa Speaks. And welcome back to Africa Speaks. Today we are joined by Ndina Kapuka, the owner, the founder, the face of Val Designs. I should tell us more about this all. And what a brand and business is all about. Hi, Ndina. Welcome to Africa Speaks. Hi, Sylvie. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you said yes to our call. <laughs> now, let's dive in. Icebreaker, who are you? So, mm -hmm. I'm not Ndina, but I'm also Ndina. Okay. So, Ndina is full for Ndinerago. Okay. Ningana, Kapuka, that's where MK comes in. Some people call me MK. I don't know where they got it from. Pingana Kapuka. Yeah, I, I so. guess. <laughs> so, yeah, um, mm -hmm. I'm clocking my 30s this year. So, about to be thrown off. About to be thrown off the calendar. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That is who you are. That is who I am. All right, I'm let's sure. talk about what brought us here. Val Designs. When exactly what was it established and what exactly is Val Designs? So that's a bit of a long story, but I'm happy you have all day. I have all day. <laughs> For you, I got all day. So Val Design started when I finished um, high school. Um, that was 2011 when I first, not first, but came to settle in Windhoek. Mm -hmm. um, I was starting off at IUM and I hated school with everything in me. Okay. Uh, number one, I wasn't studying what I always wanted to study. Um, I wanted to study in Italy. I wanted to study design. Mm -hmm. I applied in everything, but somehow, some way, it didn't go through. So I had to settle for the next best thing, which was IT, studying IT. Um, and, you know, you do it because there's a paper that you need to produce at the end yeah. of the four years, right? Yeah. So... Now, since 2011, my cousin started at a uh, UNAM Visual Arts Department, and she had a friend, um, Zulu. Zulu boy. Yeah, he Zulu boy. A, he was a kid. Yes, he <laughs> is my first, first, he's the person I learned from, actually. Yeah. He taught me a few things, but every time he designed, I would just, you know, shadow him, follow him around. He'd ask me to do a few things, and then he'd, like, you know, review me. So... They were at uh, UNAM, so most of the time I used to, to just go to UNAM with mm -hmm. my cousin, sit in their classes, whatever. So I was literally running away from my own course. Um, in the middle of that, I then, um, I ran off to South Africa at some point. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, because I was so young yeah. and I didn't really have anything driving me. Um, but ever since then, I've been doing graphics just, you know, as a extra income you know because she will never ask my mother money and say mm -hmm. you want to go do nonsense things mm -hmm. she won't even listen to you she said go to your father yeah and you know i never go to my father yeah <laughs> i never go to my father so yeah it, it went on and on and on and um i started at some point designing for ium as well doing some posters here and there and i finally came to a point where it became an actual thing, a real thing, mm. you know. Somebody asked me, so you're good at design, so why don't you just do something about it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't like what you studied anyway. Yeah. So seven, six, let's say six years later, I finally graduated. Wow. Um, In IT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also got a child. Okay. So at that time, I needed to pull my socks up because there was a child that needed me to you know, have be on my A game. So back then, I didn't even have a name for it. Mm. I, it was just something I loved doing, escape from school, you know. And then uh, after my child was born, I then decided, you know what, let me make this an actual thing. Mm -hmm. So I got a name and everything, but back then I couldn't even register for it because mm -hmm. it's like, okay. For me, it seemed like a, a long process, but yeah. then it, it became limiting because... Um, 
I couldn't apply for tenders or bigger jobs or work with the government because I don't have the right documents. Mm. So it was just a thing I did with whoever came through Facebook and they were ready to pay yeah. or companies that were recommended to me and, 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 and. So then that's how it became. My son's name is Valdez. Okay. So I combined Valdez and design. So it became Val Designs. Ah, yes. Yeah, so, so that's creative. how Val Design started. So then back then it started off a purely graphics. Um, graphics designing situation and you know I would advise um, my clients where to print or whatever but some of them preferred me to manage that mm. so basically what we do now is uh, we have now brand management I would dig into that a little bit yeah, later. I, I will ask you that question <laughs> what is brand management what do you do mm-hmm. and then we do uh, print management as well um, we do personalized trainings mm-hmm. Um, and then we also um, do graphic design now. Yeah. All right. So I want you now to walk us through now all these the services that you offer. <laughs> what do they entail? Starting from brand management. No what problem. goes into that? Okay. So brand management is um, take it from this perspective. You're starting a, a business. Yeah. But what most people fail to understand is. A business is just not a business. It's not just a logo that you put in on in front of your your building. There is a business part, and it's also a brand. You know, there is identity there. So, what differentiates you from other people? What makes you speak out? What does it mean to you yourself? So, brand management is basically from you starting to get an idea of a business, right? What drove you to create a business? Mm-hmm. You know, what speaks to you? What speaks to you in, in, a, in a manner that the minute you want to put up a logo, that logo must mean something mm-hmm. to you, you know? If you look at our logo, it's a, it's a phoenix. It means so much to me because I was a different person before I got a child. I was out in the night partying, you know, I was a life of the city. <laughs> And then after that, I became a whole different person. I was responsible, you know. I was paying my own. So I, 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 it makes me feel like I am reborn yeah. somehow, you know, the story of the Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So that is why I have that on my brain, you know. So what makes your business you, you know, what part of it is. That's why even when I start with... Um, when you come to me, oh, I need a logo. I ask you, tell me a story. What, what is it? What, what is this business? Yes, um, there was a lady who told me, no, I'm, it's a nursing school, but I'm saying, that should be something else. Yeah. That should. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I can come up with anything in two minutes, right? Yeah. And then what would it mean? So I want to sit with you. I want to hear your story. I want to link all those elements that surround your brand and, you know, bring it together. And that's, that is how you start on. Um, brand management also means you have, a, as, a, as a business, as a community that you operate in. So how do you communicate to this community? Mm. You do it through media, uh, social media, it's radio, it's TV, it's publication, uh, that's print, uh, print media. So how do you want to appear in all of this? So you, you, you cut out strategies that protect your image, mm-hmm. ima- uh, yeah. uh, strategies that, you know, make your brand stand out, really stand out. You know, um, I love what sister said about the market being saturated. Mm. It is not. It's not. Like it is not. According to who? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It is according to who? Mm. Because, look, I know a lot of graphic designers, and when I'm full, I have enough on my plate. I gladly tell my client, look, this is who and who. This one provides this type of business. Is their profile. His was profile. Choose one. Mm-hmm. You can work with them. I trust them, you know. But I don't have the time to say, oh, this person is going to steal my, my clients. Client. Let me keep everything to myself. You're going to end up disappointing the person, number one. Number two, you're going to end up um, ruining your image. So it, it, it's, a, it's a whole community. 
So you, you need to cut out those strategies. How do you want to start? Because somebody said, I don't know who, mm -hmm. but they said a good image representation is good to have. Yeah. It's not a good to have, but it's a must have. If you're into business and you're just doing it from your suitcase and nobody knows about it, then you might as well just buy your own jeans, eh? Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that is brand management. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to follow up on brand management. Brand, does, being a brand, does it have to be a business or can a person be a brand? A person is also a brand, yeah. Okay. Um, like you right now, you, we know you're Sylvie from <laughs> Hanok TV. <laughs> so you are a brand on your own. Um, that's why you have um, not only, you have people on Facebook who are um, public figure, mm -hmm. you know, all those people. Um, so there's you, there's your job. Yeah, but it's also the you. Mm -hmm. So, a person can also be a brand. Let's talk about, you said you also face trainings, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Dive into that. So, you get small business owners that, you know, when I was starting out, I was my own financial manager. I was the designer, I was the CEO, I was the person that goes talk to clients, mm -hmm. you know? I was everything. I was the social media manager. You know, but as time goes by, you realize that you need to stick to one thing that you do, you do right, right? I am good at graphic design. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to sell anything mm -hmm. to even save my life, you know? Um, that's why for a long time, the business has been based on referrals rather than we got clients from marketing, mm -hmm. maybe putting a post on my status once in a while and then... It's not a consistent thing. Yeah. I even forget about it, mm. you know, because it's not me. Yes. I'm not good at that. Yeah. So you have to position your business that you have the person that's doing your finances. Trust me, you eat up the money. I ate up the money. I <laughs> bought <laughs> nappies with the money, <laughs> you know, and mm. you know, you, you will forget to market mm. because you're too busy designing. Sure. And then, you know, it's, it, it needs to be done right. So training comes in when you have a person that's just starting out there doing everything for that just to get to reach a threshold, right? Mm -hmm. Until I make my profit and I can actually afford to pay someone, I would rather do it myself. Yeah. So this person, we sit with them, we understand what they want to do and we give them sort of like a roadmap. You start here, you do A, B, C, D. Here's how you design your stuff. We give them the easiest softwares to use. Um, I personally use Illustrator because mm -hmm. it's free for me. It's free. I can draw whatever I want. But there's also Canva, yeah. right? Canva is easy to use because the, the stuff is already done for you. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do much really except for change colors and move around elements, insert your own elements or maybe your own photos. But that's already done for you so it's easier for a person who's just starting out and you know they want to they want to do their own stuff so we train them we show them how to work around social media you know uh, these are the platforms that might work for your business and and, and and so it's really custom training it's not just a standard thing that okay you come you pay 350 per hour and then you get this, this, this yeah. is, I read through a manual that you can Google yourself. You know, it's really um, understanding the person, their business, and what they want to do. That's the only way you can create a custom design for them. I mean, custom training for them. You mentioned now that you, you need to bring in, you know, people, not do everything on your own. So talking about team members, how many people do you have in your team that are working for you? Or that you guys work together as a team in their roles, maybe? <laughs> So, so far, I have uh, three people, finance manager, mm -hmm. important. So don't chop up the one. <laughs> I don't keep buying, you know. Yeah. My child needs a business. <laughs> I need to move. You know, so I have a finance manager and then I have a, a marketing person that also does um, account management. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You so said there are three. Yeah. And me, the designer. Also together with you. Yes. You are. <laughs> I'm also part of the team. I was waiting for the, for the third person. Yeah, I'm the third person. So you said you learned graphic design from 
Yeah, I'm literally self-taught. So, self-taught. Yeah. Did you ever get to expand like your skills with pay- getting training school somewhere? Um, I want to go to school. I want to go back to school, but I hope it's just going to take like three months because I can't do it. You can do more than that. I was running away from school before. <laughs> it's not going to um, There's still um, techniques that I need to learn. Um, and this YouTube can only go so far. Yeah. You need you need the person to person training. Um, there was a friend of mine who who tried to teach me, but I couldn't really get much out because it was a limited time and there's more to it. Um, so I am planning on enrolling either um, 99 Designs in Cape Town. Okay. I'm not sure if that's the correct name, mm-hmm. but there's also another um, design school in Italy. They're very good. So <laughs> is that the one you wanted to go study for? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So my friend recently went to Italy and then they, they kept reminding me, brought back brochures of the of the university. It's like, I hope you pay for it too. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So right now or for the past 12 years, is it 12? Mm-hmm. 13 years now. Yeah. Ah. Okay. I've been, you know, developing myself. I went from designing a logo in five or ten days for regulating yeah to doing it under uh, five hours mm-hmm. in you know you meet people who are like yeah but this thing just takes uh, a few minutes why are you charging me this much i'm just like you're not paying for the time mm-hmm. you're paying for the skills that i spent 13 years developing mm-hmm. and, and you know like I am one person that always advise people when it comes to business, you can never come down from your standards. I will gladly send you to somebody who will charge you 150 for a logo instead of you paying a thousand for it. But if you really want to invest in your, <clears throat> in your brand, then for sure I'm your person. Mm. And you know, I'll go all the way. I'll spend sleepless nights as long as you're able to also you know, sit there and work with me, you know? Mm. Because at the end of the day, your part, your identity also needs to be in mm. the brand, you know? Otherwise, it's just a brand. And then five years later, you're rebranding because, you know, it still doesn't speak to you. So that's where rebranding comes in. Trust me. This thing of rushed, um, you know, I saw a tender. I need a logo quickly. I need to fix documents. You know, <laughs> it doesn't work. Ah, some years down the line, you come back. Okay, um, I'm sure you work with big companies. So how do you approach brands? Because I know there's someone who wants to be exactly like you, you know, take up this journey. So how do you approach brands to work with you? There's a new technique I learned uh, last year. Somebody told me, Dina, money is in the people's pockets. You just need to go get them. So you need to go in people's pockets. By this, I, guys, I don't mean like go in deep in people's pockets. <laughs> no, I mean um, people are online nowadays, yes. right? Even on status, mm-hmm. I take a minute of my day every day to go through all my contacts. I have about three thousand contacts in my phone, and a thousand of them are active on WhatsApp. So I go through their status and then I see what they're posting. If I see um, a rubbish post, I'm sorry to say, yeah. If I see a rubbish post or a rubbish logo, unfortunately, I'm going to come out straight. So, by the way, I do A, B, C, D. Do you maybe want to sit down and see what we can do for you mm-hmm. to better your brand? A few words. It won't hurt. It doesn't cost you anything. Mm. It's not even a gig of data, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I do stuff like that. Or what I also do is um, you go on social media. You see uh, those big companies. You know, their social media is... Mm-mm. Just yeah. no, mm-hmm. you know, and then you see who you research the company and you look. Okay, who is the end user? Who is the actually user that I need to approach? Who is the person in that company that is dealing with marketing or online uh, presence, whatever? And then you you find out where do they hang out. Sometimes you bump into the person by mistake. <laughs> bump into the person by mistake, you know. Oh, I think I know you from where you know they're all on LinkedIn. Yeah. If you just uh, search, um, let's say you're looking for 
okay, Henok TV. I don't yeah. want to say other people's yeah. companies. Henok TV. And then you go on, on LinkedIn. And then you search Henok TV um, online presence or marketing manager, whatever. You will find the people. Mm-hmm. You'll find the people. LinkedIn, you can even send the person a message. Oh, I saw you work where I want to help you um, maximize your productivity on ABCD. Yeah. And then you offer them after you've already done the research that, okay, this person needs, they need a better logo. They need a better online uh, social media strategy, you know. That person will never say no to you because at the end of the day, they might get a promotion out of it. They might get a bonus out of it, you know. Mm-hmm. You're basically helping them do their job. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, that is one of the way. But that's... fit to them, you know, research them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, the brands that you have worked with, if you don't mind telling us, like one of like, the biggest company or brand that you have worked with. Oh. Thank you. Namibia or beyond Namibia? Um, maybe a little bit conflict of interest. Mm. I work with Tinapama. Okay. Um, that's one of the biggest. I work with Onkumo Engineering. I hope they don't mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I'm sure they don't mind because I always ask. Yeah. Um, currently, I have on kosher uh, cleaning services. I had kosher last week. Yeah. You said you didn't last week. <laughs> yes. And then I also, in the food industry, I work with Piccolo restaurant. They recently reopened. So we're still busy with our strategies, you know, starting from scratch. So they are rebranded? Yeah. They, they've... They're busy rebranding, yeah. They're coming from the old Piccolo logo. Mm-hmm. No offense meant. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are some at the top of my head. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, as a brand manager or into designs, do you have to be in the same country with this person, with the company, or can you work remotely? No, 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 no. If I didn't have a full-time job, mm-hmm. trust me, I wouldn't be in Namibia. Maybe... One week, and then I go out. Look, this is a remote. It's a remote job. All you need is a computer, a good computer with a good processor and a mm-hmm. good graphic card, mm-hmm. um, and a good internet connection. Yeah. So you mentioned that you have a full time job. So when do you get to do Val Designs if you have a full time job? Everybody gets twenty four hours in a day. Mm-hmm. What do you do with it? Sleep probably. No. Some? Your full time job only takes ten hours at most. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you do with the with the rest fourteen hours? So you work from home. Yeah, because I have a I have a home yeah. office, and sometimes I work from my clients' offices. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all right. Let's yeah. take challenges. Faith, being here for more than a decade, what are the challenges that you have experienced, and how do you over, or how have you overcome? Um, number one is uh, this is a very it is supposed to be high-paying job, mm-hmm. right? But number one challenge is mostly in Namibia, people don't understand the importance of it. No. no nobody understands the importance of creatives. I am sure you can, you can relate to this. I can. So people want you to do stuff for free. Or they'll be like, oh, can you do this? And then we'll, we'll mention you on social media. Yeah. Mention don't pay the bills. Sorry. I got a child that sits at home yeah. every time I come back and I don't have bread. It's going to look at me with red eyes. What's going on? Mm-hmm. What's going on here? Mm-hmm. You know? So that's one of the challenges. The mm-hmm. mindset of the people. You know, if people were really, really open to investing in their friends, mm-hmm. as much as they spend on applying for tenders, <laughs> trust me, we wouldn't have a problem in this industry. Mm. Because number one is the prices that we set are the prices that people will charge in US dollars. Let's say if I charge uh, five, six Namibian dollars for a logo, somebody out there is charging five, sixty US dollars. That is 18 times more you get. So that's, that's problem number one. Number two is... Um, I don't like to get personal, but you know what? I'm going to put it out there. It's Mm. not a secret. I am a single mother. Mm -hmm. And between managing that 
which is also a job on its That's own cool. and managing my full-time job and, you know, staying up, which I'm used to now because I don't really sleep anyway. Mm. So why not just make money at night while everybody else is sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> so it can be a challenge at times um, because of timelines that clients set for you and, you know, the discipline between you handling your your paid because at the end of the day, that is somebody's type. Yeah. Eight to five, it's somebody's type. If you can't do it, put in leaves and go do your stuff. Mm. But you can, you can, you kind of have to have a discipline to say, look, I respect my job, but I also respect my business. So it comes to you having to manage whatever you need to manage between eight and five so that you don't carry uh, work home yeah. and affect your job and even when you do carry work home you have to make sure that you sort of be a multitasking mm -hmm. guru because either way you have to deliver on both so yeah okay. those are the most um oh and um working with contractors mm. oh goodness there is one thing i am good at is managing everything by myself and it's hiring and it shouldn't be like that mm. but it's because time and again i got disappointed you know i have selected people that i use if a client says i want a company profiles yeah and i need it printed i don't have time to run around looking for printers and you will i would understand better the files that are required mm. from the printer and everything and it wouldn't be like a middleman thing where my client is trying to print there's not enough bleed i need to edit that send it to my client, send it to the... Hmm. So you have people that will tell you, oh, yeah, 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 you know, it will be done. And then the person is like, my girl, trade phase starting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Where are my materials? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. But simply because the person was too greedy to just be honest with me and say, look, this type of job takes five to ten working days. So I can also communicate back the right thing you mm -hmm. know so in the end that person walks away nothing happens to their reputation mm -hmm. but you you are left here to do damage control you know beg the client give unreasonable discounts mm -hmm. just because you know you're trying to keep the client so those are the top three challenges that i get to think of right now in your challenges you also spoke that namibians do not understand you know, your yes. type of work. What are you trying to do to bring a solution to that so that people get to actually understand it? Um, I, I used to be one of the, the designers who just get a client and mm -hmm. say, I want a logo or I want my social media managed. And then I'll just start working. Mm -hmm. the, first, the, the first thing I do now is I sit with you and I try to understand where are you coming from? Mm -hmm. Are you just starting off or do you want to improve? Mm -hmm. You know, so that when you give people time to really explain themselves and then you also sit with them and say, look, I understand you're trying to do this, yeah. but this is how it really works. You know, this person might tell the next person when they ask, oh, I like your, your designs. Mm. Who's doing this? Like, oh, my dear, this is how you do it and this and this. You know, they start talking. Yeah. But also... um. I try to educate people wherever I am. Mm -hmm. If I come to your company and your setup is not the right, I'm, I'm going to tell you right there and then that you could try doing A, B, C, D. Sometimes they come back to you and say, do you know somebody that you can recommend? Yeah, and I was like, like, yeah, I am somebody. Me. I am somebody, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, you have to be vocal about it because at the end of the day, everybody else is quiet about it. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of uh, poets now. I know one uh, guy that does poetry, Franklin, mm. oh, yeah. uh, frankly speaking. Mm -hmm. um, he's also vocal about now when he does his shows, he, he talks about it, you know. The more we talk about the more people will become aware. Mm -hmm. It's just a mindset shift that needs to happen. Okay. Yeah. Talking about mind shifting, I want you to talk to someone who has started a business. It's not doing so well, so they probably want to throw it out. And also speak to someone who wants to start, but they are so afraid to start. What do you have to say to someone like that? So number one, for the person that is 
that is struggling mm. to to you know yeah. keep moving yeah. what i what i would say is sit down you know if you're a shop close for a week and just re-examine your business processes seek help if you if you might seek help if you can afford it tell the people directly mm -hmm. look i need to do better but i cannot afford your services mm -hmm. be honest with yourself sit with yourself and look where do i want to take my business what is my business direction mm. you know i had to come i i had to you know my i have a friend who runs a strategy business okay um so he set me down i just say i'm not doing well mm. So he sat me down and he made me throw out short-term plans, long-term plans, and actually what action am I going to take to achieve this? Thank you for that insightful interview, especially for me, because now I have knowledge really that has to do with design, brand management, I didn't know about. So thank you. And I'm sure someone out there really is very grateful because you've just given them knowledge that they did not have. It is good to be here. <laughs>